So what is an electrolysis tank and how does it work? Alright. And how to make one actually, I'm going to explain that too. So it actually removes rust off metal pieces like that. So what we got here is just a three gallon bucket. Uh, don't want to go any more than five. Uh, got two lawnmower blades, well one that's cut in half on each side. And that one there. And uh, it's cut in half and it's connected by a steel rod that I welded on. You can see. And um, then we got a center rod that's in between here. And um, you just have like a regular hanger, something on there. Uh, so for um, our power source, we're just using a battery charger. It's not plugged in or anything. As you can see, everything's off. And um, we just hook the negative up to this rod here, which attaches to the wire, positive up to here. And what you just do is I have a metal hanger in here. And what you just do is you just use like a metal hanger or wire and you just hook up any rusted part or anything that you have. Like let's say this for example, which I will put that in tonight. It's just a door spring. Um, you just hook that up to there. Current flows through. The negative current flows through here. And since water is a semiconductor, um, the current actually creates a short and it starts to bubble off this. That's as far as I know how they work. I just knew how to build one and stuff and that it will magically work, which it did. And um, as you can see, I got a lot of rust off a bunch of parts that settled all down to the bottom. And um, that it will remove the rust, and it did. With some other things, let me show you an example. Uh, this here, uh, as you can see, it's to be still cleaned up because of the white stuff from all the washing soda and stuff that was in the water. But it removed pretty much all the rust. This was an old iron that we found um, from like the 1800s. And um, as you can see, it totally removed the rust mostly. Um, you know, we kind of like brushed it off with a wire brush and stuff after we're done. Really cleaned up all the crap and stuff, but... You can see how well that actually did and wor worked that stuff free. That was only in there for like two days, so. Alright, uh, let's get started on what this, ha how this works. Uh, well, how to make one. So, let me explain what you're going to need. You're going to need a battery charger, uh, at least 6 amp or higher. You're going to need um, a bucket, uh, at least 5 gallon or smaller. Uh, don't want to go too much bigger. Um, because the bigger you go, the less it's going to work. Especially if you have kind of your battery charger isn't the most powerful. You need a lawnmower blade or a piece of rebar, anything. Two pieces of metal on each side. And that connect each other with a wire or whatever you choose. And you're going to need this rod here. And uh, just metal hanger. So it's actually very cheap stuff that you can just probably find laying around, you know. I didn't spend a penny to make this thing, because this is all stuff I had and stuff laying around that any shop should pretty much have. And you also need some washing soda, which that you can go out in Walmart and buy some washing soda. Pretty cheap. And you just pour just a little bit in, I think it's just like, maybe like one or two tablespoons, I think is actually enough. Um, anyways, so, um... After you got that all set up, I'll let you observe negative there. And you can kind of get the idea how it works, you know, since the water semiconductor and stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull the hanger out. And uh, I don't know, sometimes it takes just a few, maybe like a few minutes, like maybe two mi one or two minutes before it will start to bubble and you'll start to see it. Oops, sorry. Alright, so we just got that hanging on there like that. I think this is going to touch the bottom. Yeah, oh well. I guess that's okay. Um, as long as it's not touching the blade in there, you don't want anything to touch the blade in here. Like any of the other metal parts. So that's in there. And the wire, metal wire is attached to it. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to plug our battery charger in, set it, turn it up to full. Unless it has the crank setting on it, which some battery chargers do. And, um, after a little bit, you'll start to see bubbles start to form. As you can start to see, looks like foam coming off the bubbles there. Well, you can see it's real strong there. Um, after the connection, like it cleans up the area around where it connects to. Um, once it cleans up, like let's say that piece where it's connecting right there, it'll bubble on that wire and it will get contact and you will actually start to see the whole thing start to bubble. But that takes a little bit. But as you can see, that wire was clean, so that was going to get contact first. So as soon as you can get contact within that rusted part, which if it's sitting on top of that piece of metal there, it will eventually get the contact and then the whole piece will start to bubble. But that takes maybe, I don't know, a good 10 minutes at least. And uh, actually it's starting to do it right now, just a little bit on that corner. And uh, I tell you what, some things, it depends on what it is, how big the item is. Some things can take as little as maybe a half an hour, I've seen them. Uh, very rare cases if it's not bad. And I've seen things take as much as three days, you know. But I tell you what, it does a very good job at what it does. Uh, it beats sandblasting a little bit, not really as much, but it's much cheaper than sandblasting anything you get in the sandblasting cabinet. And uh, not only that, you can actually get, it gets it off evenly, meaning with a sandblaster, sometimes you may have a hard time getting into like really tight corners, especially with a wire wheel, especially. And, um, you know, that can really... That's one positive side to it. It you don't really have all that much of an issue with it's like that. But then again, electrolysis has its downside too. Now let me just demonstrate that there is actually current flown. I I know you can probably tell that, but if you actually put the wire up against it, you probably can't see it on the camera. Uh not yet. I know it takes a little while actually the current stopped as soon as it did that, but as soon as I touch it up against, it starts to bubble again. And if you actually look real closely, you can actually see sparks right there. You just seen one there, and that's proof that current's flowing. Like I said, water is a semiconductor, so it's it'll get it. As you can see there, really flowing strong. It almost looks like air foaming out and stuff. Ooh, it's coming up against that blade there. I don't want it to touch any of the metal parts. And I tell you what, I might make even if it actually turns out as good results with the spring. I don't know the spring about the spring here. It's really, really bad, but I'll come back out tomorrow and I'll show you what the spring looks like and stuff. And you'll be amazed. You'll probably want to make one yourself. They really do work good, and I think almost any shop should have one. And it's really easy to make, too. It doesn't really cost you anything. 